Hello again. Welcome to another um, literary analysis lesson about a short story by James Joyce called Araby. Last time when we left off, we were talking about point of view. So today we're going to be talking about plot and conflict. Um, so this is sort of the last one of that base tier of literary elements that make up the structure of a piece. Um, so the setting, the point of view, the character, the plot, those are kind of the things that really set the basis for your analysis. And then we're going to get to that last layer underneath, which are the additional choices that an author might make to build towards their theme or message. So today we're going to focus on plot. Um, what you might be more familiar with, um, with plot, is something called Freytag's Pyramid, or you might have just heard it called a plot diagram. It looks something like this, and you'll see something, you know, like exposition. Um, then this would be the rising action. Up here would be the climax. Here would be the falling action. And then finally, you would have the resolution or the denima, the French term. Um, but there's some really important other things here, which are, you should have right here, um, you should have something called the inciting incident. So that would be the thing that sort of is the catalyst for the conflict of your story. So that's the thing that kicks off the problem or the issue in your story. And then you probably will have something closer to the end um, where you actually get sort of the wrapping up of that conflict. So I do like to sort of separate the resolution and the denim all, but it's kind of hard to do so. But you should have some sort of resolving incident, um, as it were, before you get to the actual ending resolution. If you're talking about a longer novel or something like that, in a short story, it's not going to be as important because the resolution of the story is going to be that last incident, probably. Um, you also might have, if you're talking about a larger story or a more complex story, you might have something called the complication here. Um, and then you might have the reversal here. So as the actual conflict is sort of growing, you will have usually like a little extra something, a little extra wrench in the works. So it's almost like that moment when you feel like the hero is going to lose, like you feel like they're going to fall. And that's the complication. And then, of course, after the climax of the story, you should see a reversal in fortune. Um, so their fortune might reverse in some way. This is the plot structure that might be more important if you're reading a novel or watching a play or a movie but it's not going to be very helpful for a short story, in which case the story might be sort of fast-tracked to get to a punchline or an ending. And so you might not have all of these steps. So when you're doing literary analysis on a short piece, I'm going to caution you against thinking about it like a plot diagram or a Freytag pyramid. But it's important to keep that in mind because there is still that general shape. You still have sort of arising and falling, but it's not going to perfectly match this. What is going to be more helpful is thinking about what happens first, what happens in the middle or next, and what happens last. Think about it as a series of three. It's a really good even number to think about it. What happens at the beginning, what's going on in the middle, and what's going on at the end. Um, and then you can kind of think about are, are these things present? You know, are there whoa, what's going on with my arrow here? Are there flashbacks? Are there parallel plots? Are there illusions? Are there conflicts, multiple conflicts? So flashback would be when you, a character jumps to the past and thinks about something that's already happened. Um, you can also have flash forwards. So any type of unique structure you wanna pay attention to. Parallel plots means you have two storylines going on simultaneously. One of the sort of famous ones of the newer time is think about like Game of Thrones or something like that where you have multiple characters um, having different events happen to them. Um, illusions. So this is reference to other works. So an illusion is when 
it, instead of making a full citation, you just simply allude to something that your audience would also know. You reference something that they might know. Um, and then obviously the conflict. So what is the force that is creating an issue? When you're thinking about conflict, there's lots of different types of conflict. The best way to think about it is, is it external or internal? So is it forces that are fighting? Like, is there an enemy, like a bad guy that the main character is fighting? Or is it internal? Is it more of them fighting with themselves and fighting with their own thoughts and trying to understand the world? Um, of course, then there's many different kinds of conflicts. Is it man versus nature? Is it man versus technology? Things like that. But you're thinking mostly about, is it an external force, an outside force that is creating the issue? Or is it internal? Is it the character thinking about their problems? So if we could just kind of think about this in terms of Araby so far, obviously the conflict's internal. He's having issues with trying to reason um, what he's going to do. Is, is he going to do something or not? He's kind of paralyzed by that inaction. So let's go ahead and read a little bit and then we're going to jump back to talk about the structure. One evening, I went into the back drawing room in which the priest had died. It was a dark, rainy evening and there was no sound in the house. Through one of the broken panes, I heard the rain impinge upon the earth find incessant needles of water playing in the sodden beds. Some distant lamp or lighted window gleamed below me. I was thankful that I could see so little. All my senses seemed to desire to veil themselves and feeling that I was about to slip from them, I pressed the palms of my hands together until they trembled, murmuring, oh love, oh love, many times. So if we're thinking about the structure here, let's think about the beginning. Mostly the beginning is just setting up what the world looks like and introducing the character. So we know that Mangan's sister's there and we know that there's this unnamed protagonist and he's obsessed with her. He thinks he's in love with her. Okay, that's mostly the beginning. But now we're getting a jump in time. So that's what I want you to think about when you're thinking about the structure. He now says, one evening. Okay, so now that he's saying one evening, we're getting a change in time, one evening. Now we're at a specific event. So this is sort of the middle action here. And then think about the ending as wherever the resolution is. So one evening, he goes into the back drawing room. He's so focused on the rain. And then he presses his hands together. Oh, love, oh, love. So what has happened so far? What is the conflict? The conflict is he is in love with her or he's obsessed with her and he, he doesn't know how to tell her. He doesn't even know if he ever will. Move my little box here. At last, she spoke to me. When she addressed the first words to me, I was so confused that I did not know what to answer. She asked me, was I going to Araby? I forgot whether I answered yes or no. It would be a splendid bazaar she said she would love to go. And why can't you, I asked. While she spoke, she turned a silver bracelet round and around her wrist. She could not go, she said, because there would be a retreat that week in her convent. Her brother and two other boys were fighting for their caps and I was alone at the railings. She held one of the spikes, bowed her head towards me. The light from the lamp opposite our door caught the white curve of her neck lit up her hair that rested there and, falling, lit up the hand upon the railing. It fell over one side of her dress and caught the white border of a petticoat, just visible as she stood at ease. It's well for you, she said. If I go, I said, I will bring you something. Now, wait a second. Think about the timeline. Didn't you just tell us that something happened on one evening? It was a flashback. Because now we're back in present time. Everything we've been talking about since that opening scene has all been jumps in time. Now he's back on that step again. Think back to the very beginning when he's out playing with his friends and Megan's sister calls to them. We're back in that time now. Remember what I said about those time skips, flashbacks and forward. 
now we're back. And she finally speaks to him. So all of that agony that we were getting there was all intermixed into this one scene in this one event where she finally speaks and she tells him that she wants to go to the Araby, which is this market. And it's a, it's a bazaar. It's a, it, almost like a, like a flea market. And she can't go. So he finally says, if I go, I'm going to bring you something. Okay, now we have plot happening here. Now we have something going. Everything up till now has been all internal. Um, the main character worrying about whether or not she's going to speak to him, whether or not he's going to show his love for her. Now we finally get the plot moving forward. So at the beginning, she never talks to him. He's worried. Now we finally get this moment here in the middle. I want to go to the Airbnb. I can't go. Well, if I go, I'm going to bring you something. So now we know that there's somewhere moving forward with the plot. What's going to happen when he gets to the bazaar? That's what you should be kind of thinking. Okay. That's where we're going to sort of stop for right now. And then we'll come back later with a little bit more um, about this short story.